Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God this morning. I pray, God, you'd help us. We thank you for the good singing. Lord, we thank you for the time with the children. And, God, what you blessed us with, we are grateful and we thank you. Bless us now and help us together around the Word of God for a little while. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm chapter number 23. Most people have committed this psalm to memory. We hear it read a lot at funerals. We hear it preached on some. But it's always been a treasure to my heart because of the message in this psalm. The Bible tells us here that the Lord is my shepherd. Now I can't hardly ever get past that part without preaching because I know that it is something personal to know that the Lord is your shepherd. He is my shepherd. How? Why? Because I'm his sheep. Amen. I'm one of his sheep, and that makes him my shepherd. Not everybody can say that. Not everybody in the world can read this, uh, read this psalm and, and, and have it for truth in their life because God, the Lord, is not everybody's shepherd. If the Lord was everyone's shepherd and everyone was following the shepherd, then our world would be a much better place. And let me narrow that down a little bit. If our cities and our communities locally if they were all sheep of the pasture of God, if they were all sheep of the good shepherd and following, then our cities and our communities would be much better. Amen? If our churches were all sheep, you say, you don't believe all the churches are sheep? I promise you, friend, that there's someone in our church this morning, very possibly real good chance, that they've never been saved by the grace of God. That doesn't make them a sheep. That makes them uh, that doesn't make them a follower of God. That does not make them one that can follow the shepherd. So if every church member was a sheep, and every church member of every local assembly around here, if every church member were following the shepherd, would that not make a much better community and a much better church? Amen. Now, that's, sometimes that's hard to stomach. Sometimes that's hard to think about. But remember, going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Going to church doesn't make you a sheep. What makes you a sheep is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Trust in Him as your Savior, believing that He was born of a virgin, believing that He lived a sinless life, believing that He died on the cross of Calvary for your sin and for mine, believing that he arose from the dead and believing that with your heart and asking Jesus to come into your life, that's what makes you a sheep. A lot of folks have never been born again. A lot of folks are not sheep. A lot of folks are dependent on their good works, their good deeds, maybe their church membership, maybe their baptism. But just because you may have done all of these things and you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, you've never invited him into your heart, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Therefore, friend, if you die lost in your sins, you'll go to hell without God and without hope. Are you a sheep today? If you are, then read on with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And what? I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now what a tremendous message. What tremendous verses out of the Word of God. And if you can with all your heart today say the Lord is my shepherd, then listen, here is how He reveals His self to you. And I want to give you about four things real quickly and we'll be done. I say real quickly, maybe, maybe not. But I want to give you four things and we'll be done. Well, number one, how He reveals Himself to the sheep. How does God reveal Himself to you and I? He reveals Himself to us. Number one, you're saved. He, re he revealed Himself to you as your Savior. But after you're saved and you come to know the Lord and you're one of His sheep, He, re he reveals Himself to you as the good shepherd of love. As the good shepherd of love. 
Did you know that the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, loves you? John chapter number 10 and verse number 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He's the good shepherd, and he loved you and I enough to give his life for us. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for me when I was not saved. When I was in sin, when I was out in the world, when I didn't care, I was saved in a young age. But guess what? I was just lost. I was just as lost as the meanest drunk or the meanest drug addict or the meanest drug dealer. I was just as lost as they were. I was without hope. But Jesus loved me, and as the, as the good shepherd, he loves me. He loved me by showing me that in dying for me on the cross of Calvary. He gave his life for me. And we see him also as the great shepherd, the great shepherd that has great power. Now, friend, my, my shepherd has great power. David, being the shepherd here in this psalm, he had great power given to him by God. You remember when he was uh, going before Goliath, he said, I slew a bear and I slew a lion, and I'll certainly take care of this big giant Goliath. You know how that he slew the bear and the lion, and you know how that he slew Goliath? By the power of God. And Christ is our great shepherd that gives us power through his resurrection. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. He's my great shepherd. No wonder the psalmist could say, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Why? Because he knew the same shepherd that I know. He's a great shepherd. He's a good shepherd, he's a great shepherd, and also he is the chief shepherd. Now he's the only one. See, David was a shepherd that, that uh, you know, there were many shepherds in that day. Some of those shepherds had shepherds under them that, that took care of things while they were away. Well, David would, be, would have been considered, I believe, a chief shepherd because he had his flock. That was his flock when he went away to fight Goliath. He left someone under him to take care of those sheep. Now, Jesus is the chief shepherd. He's the one. He's got other ones under him. I'm, I'm a shepherd of this flock. I'm the one that's supposed to lead God and help you all. <coughs> but Jesus is the chief shepherd. I answer to him. Amen. I answer to him. Jesus is the chief shepherd that one day is going to come back and take all of us away from here. Amen. I look at this world. There is war everywhere. There is fightings everywhere. And there is even in our own country, oh, there's a disturbance at our own border. And listen, everything's going wrong. There don't seem like there's anything going right. But let me tell you, everything's going right. Amen. And Jesus is about to come back and get us. He is the, the chief shepherd that's going to step out one day on the cloud of glory and he's going to say, come up hither and those that are saved in the grace of God are going to go to be with him. Those that are lost will remain here to in the end be plunged into hell without hope, without God. Oh my, I'm glad I'm a sheep today, amen. I'm glad I'm a sheep. I'm glad I'm not a goat. I'm glad I'm a sheep. There's a message right there that I may preach to you, the difference between sheep and goats, but I'll not do that today. Amen. Somebody say amen. I'm talking to you today about being a sheep and having the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, to guide me and to guide you and to direct us and to look at the chief shepherd when all the things that are in the world that are going wrong today, I can look to the chief shepherd and he says, it's all right, I know what's going on, amen. But Lord, what about the Middle East? It's, I mean, Israel's bombing them every day. I say, have at it. I say, don't stop until the mess is cleaned up, amen. I wouldn't even go over there. Listen, if I had any leadership ability in this country, I wouldn't even send nobody over there to try to get a ceasefire. You say, preacher, you're a war maker. No, I'd say, all right, I'd, I'd, I'd call the president of Israel, but Mr. Netanyahu, I'd call him out. I'd say, listen here, y'all don't quit till it's over with. Goodbye, click. That'd be my diplomatic foreign policy on the nation of Israel. You take care of business. Hey, and by the way, if you need any help, we got warships sitting right out there in the Mediterranean Sea. You call us. We'll come in and lay down a few for you. Click. I don't agree with that preacher. That's all right. I don't care. I do. Amen. 
I believe we ought to let them alone, let them defend themselves, and if they need help, we got their back. Amen. But you know what? That ain't the way it is. I'm afraid that's not so. I'm afraid we're doing so politically correct in this world that we're, listen, this world is a ticking time bomb just like that. Now listen, they're fighting with Hamas. They're fighting with, oh, on the Gaza Strip, but they're fighting against Russia. They're fighting against Iran and no matter how many other countries that are in the background shoving in the military, shoving in their, their might down there to the Palestinians, to those down there that are fight, they're fighting against and saying, come on, just take it, just here's what you need, just keep bombing. But Israel's had enough. And I say, go get them till the last hole is blowed up. Amen. Till the last tunnel is caved in. You know why? Because they've got the great shepherd watching over them. That's who Israel's shepherd is. It's the great shepherd, even though they don't believe like we believe that still God's chosen people and God's not going to allow them to be destroyed. Amen. Well, guess what? That same chief shepherd is mine and God's going to watch over me. God's going to take care of me. God's going to protect me. And I'm looking to the great shepherd, amen, to watch over me in these last days that we live in. I'll preach it's going to be another hundred years. Man, I wouldn't look at it like that. He may come back today. He may come back this afternoon. He may come back with me preaching this message. What a blessing it will be. But look, friend, we've got to think about something while we know the chief shepherd is coming back for his sheep. We've got to think about this, and I want this to be a sobering thought to you today. Who do you know that's lost? Who do you know that's on their way to hell? Who do you know that's playing church and has never accepted Jesus as their Savior? You might not know those folks, but who do you know that's never accepted Christ as their Savior? Is there someone in the building today that's never bowed the knee before the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner? Jesus, will you come into my heart and save me? Is there one here today that may be just that? Who do you know that's lost? Now suppose Jesus come back, suppose the next big cloud coming through the sky was the one that Jesus steps out on and says, come up hither. How many of your family are going to be left behind? And does that bother you at all? I've been, I've been troubled here lately by the nonchalantness of Christians about people dying and going to hell without God. Nobody seems to care anymore. Does anybody care? Now that's another message, and here the Lord's then brought it right into the midst of this, and I planned this for later, but I might as well go ahead since God's given it to me. How many of you care if your brother, your sister, your aunt, your, your uncle, your next door neighbor plunges into hell without God? You know why we don't see more people saved? Because nobody seems to have a burden for lost people anymore. Now this ain't going to be too popular, but I might as well just go ahead because the Lord ain't going to let me do nothing else this morning. Listen to me, I want to tell you something. I ask for requests for prayer in church. Nearly ever do I hear anyone say, I've got a burden for my lost loved one. Oh sure, we hear a lot of prayer requests for sick folks, and I'm all, that's fine, that's good. We should pray for them. But you know what I'd like to hear? I'd like to hear someone's under a burden for their lost loved one and that, that's going to hell without God. And would you pray for this lost person that they don't go to hell without God? I remember, and I'm going back in the past, but it's still true today. I remember when we would go to church and, and people would get in the altar and pray for a lost person that was going to hell. Maybe a husband would get in there for his wife or maybe a wife would get in the altar for their husband and say my husband's going to hell will you, will you help me pray that God will get, un, get them under conviction that they might be saved I've got a boy that's lost without God living in sin and I don't want to see him go to hell will you get in here with me and help me pray that this lost person might get saved that my son might get saved where has gone our burden for the Lord for those that are lost where has gone our burden for lost people i tell you where it's went. It's went with all the pleasures that life has to offer the Christian. It's gone with all the technology that's out there that'll keep our mind off of praying for lost people. It's got our minds on us instead of lost, uh, the lost and dying world. And it's easy to say, 
There's lost people, but friend, some of them, your next door neighbor, some of them, your, your blood kin, if they don't get saved, they're going to go to hell. And does anybody care if anybody goes to hell anymore? Does anybody care? Oh, God, help us. God, trouble me. I've been, I've been begging the Lord this week to trouble me for lost people in this community and trouble me for lost people because, friend, I want to tell you something. Except we get a burden as a church for lost people, we'll never see revival. We'll never see people getting saved if we don't get a burden for lost people in our community. Amen. That chief shepherd the one over us, the one that's going to one day step out on the cloud of glory and call us out to be with him in the air. That chief shepherd is waiting to save the last one that will come to him. Do you care about people? Does it even matter that people are going to hell? If I could open the door, if I could paint you a picture, if I could tell you in colorful enough words what hell is to get you. But listen, what I've got is the Word of God. And if the Word of God is not good enough for you to understand and believe that there is a hell for people to shine and a heaven to gain, then I can't convince you. It'll take the Holy Ghost of God through the Word of God to convince you that people right now, as I preach, are screaming in hell, wanting to get out. It'll take the Word of God telling you about the rich man that in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeing Lazarus in a, in a, a place a, apart from him. He looked at him and said, Will you just let him come and give me one drop of water on my tongue that it might cool my tongue of this terrible flame I'm in. The Bible tells us that that place called hell is a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's so painful that one sees the other and runs and gnashes with their teeth upon them because of the agony of their torment. And guess what? That, that rich man has been in hell for, for uh, 2,000 years. And as he's been in hell for 2,000 years, he's been in torment for 2,000 years, and millions have plunged into that place after him and would do anything to be able to repent and come to God. But guess what? When it's too late, too late. The most awful, awful word in the English language to you and I today is when a lost person hears the word too late. Too late! If you're here and you're lost this morning, don't you wait till it's too late. Heard a fellow give a testimony of his papa. He'd gotten saved and his papa was lost and he and everybody knew that his papa was lost and he went and tried to talk to his papa and he talked to him and his papa wouldn't respond at all, no way. So he went and talked to one of his cousins that he knew had a good relationship with his papa. And he said, why won't papa talk to me about being saved? Why won't he even talk to me about it? And his cousin said, if he talks to you, he'll tell you this. And he told him why. So he said, I'm going to go talk to him for myself. He went back. And he talked to his papa and he said, Papa, i got to know why you won't gas Jesus into your heart. I want to know why you don't get saved. He said his papa looked at him with tears running down his face and he said, I can't. He said, I can't. I can't get saved. I want to get saved. I want to repent. But I can't get saved because I, I give up. The, I, I gave, when God gave me my last chance, I rejected him. Now I can't get saved. Oh, my friend today, would that not be a horrible way to know that you were going to die and go to hell and there's no hope? Listen, there, listen, today is the day of salvation. The Bible tells us you've got loved ones, you've got friends, you've got family, that one day it's going to be too late for them. One day it's going to be too late. And when it's too late, friend, they're going to plunge into hell lost without God. God help us that, be, that we would get a burden for our lost people. Some of y'all have family members sitting at home this morning lost as a snake in high grass. But do you care? Now this hits me as hard as it does you. Do I care if people are going to hell? Does it bother me? Listen, we watch things on TV. We watch, we watch sin on TV and then people are going to hell without God. Does it bother us? 
that we're being entertained by people that are lost and going to hell without God? We see people such as drunks. Hey, we see sodomites. We see the lesbians. We look down and say how terrible that is, how wicked that is, and certainly it is, but did you know God died for them just like he did me? And does anybody have a burden? Does anybody care if they die and go to hell without God? We get in our own little world. We get in our own little world. I'm saved and my four and that's good enough for me. Listen, it should never be good enough for us when people beside us are going to hell without God. I've got some folks at work that Lord's been letting me deal with just a little bit here, there, and yonder. And I'm praying God put a burden on my heart. Don't let me just witness, but God put a burden on my heart for those that are going to hell. Hell's a wicked place, a terrible place. And one day that chief shepherd's going to step out on the cloud of glory and he's going to call his to be with him. And those that you might have on your mind right now are going to go to hell without God. You say, but I'll be all right. But what? do you not care about your friends? Do you not care about your family enough to lift them up to the Lord in prayer? I had no idea this message was going this way. I had no idea. I had planned a message to preach, but I didn't know it was going to be today on such a thought as this. Didn't know how God could bring it out of, of Psalm 23, but he did. When the chief shepherd shall appear, then you and I and all those that are saved are going to be with him, but your lost neighbor is going to die and go to hell. What about if he's your husband? What if he's your wife? What about if he's one of your children? Would you care then? Or do you care? Listen, they might not be lost. They might be just out of the will of God. It's been a long time since I heard anyone say, pray for my, pray for my uh, loved one that's out in sin, that's out of the will of God. Pray for them that God bring them back in. We'll talk about and pray about the things that we care about. Amen? What about those just playing church? Do we care about them? They think they're all right. But again, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Friend, we're living in the last days of time. If God don't stir us with a burden, we're going to, watch, we're going to stand and watch. As people stand before the great white throne of judgment, we're going to stand and watch as our loved ones are, plunged, are, are thrown into hell or plunged into hell. No wonder God will have to wipe all the tears away from our eyes and clear that from our memory or heaven would never be real to us. Oh, my friend today, does it bother you that people are going to hell? Now I want you, everybody, to bow your head just a minute. There again, I haven't got the message preached that I planned for two Sundays now, but God will give it to us later. But this may be all of it. While every head's bowed and no one looking around, I want to ask you today, will God bring one person to your remembrance right now that's going to hell and you know they're lost? Would you slip up your hand? One person that you know that's lost without God. Many hands were raised. And put them down. Now, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You say, well, somebody elite, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to get a burden for them and start praying for them every day that they don't go, and go to hell without God? Are you, when you have an opportunity, going to go to them and say, look, I don't want to see you go to hell without God. Would you come to church? You listen. If that's all you can do is invite them to church, try your best to get them into the house of God because, they're listen, they're going to hell. And I'll, say, I'll, I'll just ask you this. If you want a burden for lost people, we're not going to stand or anything. Let me ask this question before I do do this. Is anybody here lost? Is anybody here that's never accepted Jesus as your Savior? Will you slip your hand up? Will you admit it before? 
I'm not listening. All I want to do is just look at you and acknowledge it, and I'll pray for you. Is all I'm going to do. Would you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, I've never accepted Christ. I am lost without God. Now, folks, if you, if, you, if you want God to give you a burden for lost people, why don't you slip out and come down to this altar and say, Lord, give me a burden for lost people. Until we get to that place, we're never going to see our loved ones pray. While the altar is open right now. Father, I come before thee, God, as humbly as I know how. God, we beg you in Jesus' name. God, we've slept long enough. God, we've been asleep long enough. God, we've, Lord, we've put it off long enough. God, people are going to hell without God. Lord, what can we do? What are we going to do, Lord? Oh, God, I'm begging you. Jesus name God you give us a burden I don't know who came to this altar God but Lord I pray that you give me a burden for lost people God we see them Lord we know they're lost but God we don't care God help us to care Lord for the souls of men and God until we care for the souls of men God they, they're, they're going to plunge into hell without ever heard the good news of the gospel they're going to go to hell and think nobody ever cared about God, we're going to be left with blood stains with, with their blood on our hands when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Lord, when we stand to be judged, God, for our good works, God, we're going to be, we're going to stand, Father, Lord, with loss because we've not had a burden for lost people. And God, when we stand before the great white throne of judgment and those, God, that are plunged into hell, and they look at us and say, Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? God, we fail to tell them and they'll go to hell without God, without hope, and their blood will be upon our hands. Dear God, I beg you, in Jesus' name, God, give us a burden. God, if we're ever to see men saved, if we're ever to see children saved, God, give us a burden. God, help our church to get under a burden for lost people. And God, that when we come to church in the house of God, they'll say, please pray for my lost loved one. And God, we can band together and pray, God, till the convicting spirit of God comes upon them and they come to know you. Oh, God, give us a burden. Oh, Lord, I pray, God, give us a burden. We don't know how long we've got. God, give us a burden. Lord, please help us, Lord, to understand where people are going and what they're going through. Oh, God, will you please, God, touch us, Lord. We need revival in the worst sort of way. Oh, God, we need to be stirred of God. Lord, if you don't do something, Lord, our churches are going to die. And Father, if you don't do something, Lord, we're going to have multitudes going to hell without a witness. God, please, 